Hi, Madeline here from Sonic Bloom. Today we're going to look at all the new shortcuts that were added in Ableton Live 12, apart from those for clips. Those I've made a separate video for that will come out next week because it's just honestly a lot of shortcuts in total. This is also why I've created a PDF for all the shortcuts that I'm showing you here today that you can download for free. Link in the description and above as well. Let's dive right in. And the first section is all about focusing or showing and hiding elements in the interface of Ableton Live. And the first eight shortcuts all work with Alt, also called Option on Mac, and a number. And so Alt and Zero focuses the control bar. So up top, you could see that the tempo up here was selected, then Alt and one focuses the session view, Alt and two, the arrangement view, Alt and three, the clip view, Alt and four, the device view, Alt and five, focuses the browser, Alt and six, the groove pool, and Alt and seven, the help view. So now if I press this again, any of these shortcuts, they won't go away again. So I can just show you. So Alt and six, it just focuses back on the groove pool. It doesn't close it. So for this, we actually can use either Command on Mac or Control on Windows. So if I press Command Alt N6 or Control Alt N6 on Windows, I can close the groove pool. We can also open it up this way. And the same Command or Control plus Alt N7 hides the help view or shows it. The same also works for the clip and device view. So if I do command or control on Windows plus Alt and three, we can also open the clip view. And since they're now both possible to be open at the same time, this would open that one up top. So if I want to toggle the visibility of the device view, we can do command or control Alt and four. And if you want to toggle the focus between the session view and the arrangement view, once it's open, like before, if I just close one of them again, you could use shift tab to switch between them. And so now when they're both open, you can use the same command. So shift and tab to just switch the focus between the two views. And then if both are closed, you can hold Alt and click down here on the toggle for either view. They're actually open both at the same time. Now to the new shortcuts in the session view. First up, we've got the page up and down keys that you can use to move up and down by eight scenes at a time. So that is if you have those keys on your keyboard, so on laptops that generally isn't available. So if I press this key, you can see I'm moving down to scene nine and then when I'm pressing the page up, I'm going back to scene one. Then next up, we've got command on Mac or control on Windows plus shift and F9 to toggle record in the session view. So I can start and stop the session record. If you're on Mac, by default, the different function keys, so F1, F2, and so on, they actually have special controls like um, play, adjusting the volume and things like that. So if you want to use this shortcut that I just showed you, you're going to have to go to your system settings or system preferences. The naming is different depending on what operating system you're on. And then you're going to have to go down to keyboard, then click on keyboard shortcuts. And then down here, you find the function keys. Like the way it looks can be different as well, depending on Mac OS. And so you're going to have to make sure that this is turned on. So basically, you, you want to set it then to use a standard function key. So if you want to still use these other controls like pause and turning the volume up and down, you're going to have to use the function key plus those keys to still make it work. So you're going to have to decide what you find more important. If you have any clip slots selected, and when we're going to just trigger this scene. And I'll just select these three. And then I'm pressing Control on Windows or Command on Mac plus Enter. 
you'll see that the clip stop buttons were triggered and the clips were stopped. Now to the key commands in the arrangement view. So now you can use the mixer in the arrangement view in Live 12. And for this, we can actually use two commands. The first one is Shift, Alt and M. But if I press this one again, you can see it doesn't hide the mixer again. So what I would recommend is to actually remember the other one that I'm going to show you now, because this one shows and hides the mixer section in the arrangement view. So this one is either Control on Windows or Command on Mac, plus Alt and M. And you can see it can be toggled to be shown or hidden. Basically, the mixer section in the arrangement view functions as like, not just where you have the faders, as it used to be in Life 11 and before in the session view, but basically it's the whole thing where you have basically the what used to be called the mixer section, the sends, the in-out section and the return tracks as well. But for those, you also have individual key commands so you can show and hide them as necessary. That again is control on Windows or command on Mac plus Alt. I for the in-out works as a toggle as you can see, sends is S and for the return tracks it's R. What I really like, what is really cool is that you can now resize an arrangement clip with the keyboard as long as you have basically an insert marker at basically the beginning or the end of a clip. So I can either set it here or here. I'm going to put it here and then I can press enter and now I can go left or right to either make it shorter or bigger depending on the grid setting. So you can see I'm pressing the left arrow key and I'm making it smaller by the grid setting. And with the right arrow key, I can make it bigger. So let's say I've made it smaller, decide against it. I can simply press escape to cancel the whole thing. And if I, let's say I'm going to do it again, so I press enter to get into this mode basically. And then I press the left arrow key to make it shorter. And now if I want to keep the setting like this, so the clip resized that way, I can press enter again. And also nice, because that already worked for audio clips, is that you can now reverse MIDI clips as well by pressing R. So I can just select this one, press R, and you can see that the notes inside have been reversed. Another new shortcut that you can use in the arrangement view is Control Windows or command on Mac plus shift and space to move the insert marker to the current position of the playhead. So let's try this out. And as you can see up top here, it works. Now to new or changed key commands relating to tracks. So first up, we've got a change that is quite helpful in terms of still being able to use things when you have the computer MIDI keyboard on. So the computer MIDI keyboard, you could just turn this on here or you can press M. But as soon as it was on, then you were unable to use the other single key commands in life. So for example, S for soloing. So if I press S now, nothing happens. But now in Life 12, I can press Shift and S and now I can still solo the selected track. That works for the other single letter key commands as well. Then another thing is track freezing. That finally got a key command, which is great. So let's say I want to freeze this first track. Then what you need to do is you're going to have to have it selected, obviously, and control on Windows, command on Mac, plus Alt, plus Shift, plus F. And you can see it's now freezing this first track then so let's say you're focused here on a session slot and you want to go back then you can press escape and it takes you to the tracks header same if you're in the arrangement somewhere you can press escape and you'll go back to the track header and that also goes for then if you're somewhere in the mixer control, say let's for example here you're focused on the volume fader, pressing escape takes you back. I think this is most useful as an accessibility feature. So now to a new feature in Live 12, which is called momentary latching. And that works 
only for certain single key commands. So let's take S for soling as an example. So as you can see up here, I've got the computer MIDI keyboard off. And now if I press S, I solo the selected track. If I press it again, it's off. That's not the new thing. What is new is that if you press one of those keys for at least 500 milliseconds, so let me do this. You can see that once I let go, it's actually off again. So it's only as long as you hold it that it will be on and that it will be turned off again or the opposite depending on what state you were in beforehand. The same goes for the um, automation. So A. Or the draw mode B. Or I can also select something and then press Z. And then I go back out again. And then F1 through F8 toggle the track activator switch for the first eight tracks. So let me go back to the session view because it's easy to see. So if you're on Mac, remember you're going to have to have this option turned on in the system settings or system preferences. But if I hold it only quickly, I can basically mute the track. So now we're getting to two shortcuts that are used for something in the control bar. So the first one is Alt, Shift and F that you can use to turn the follow switch on and also off. And O now toggles the metronome on and off. Now to the shortcuts that you can use for two new features that are connected, which is the similarity search in the browser and the similar sample swapping that exists in the drum rack itself. So you can swap out the whole kit or drum pads. So you can swap individual samples on drum pads and also in simpler. So here in the browser, I can just select something like a preset here and you can see this icon, which is to show similar files. You can either click on this or you can use the key command for that, which is control on Windows or command on Mac plus shift and F. And then you can simply use the arrow keys to go down. And technically what you can also do is you can use the same command to now search for similar files from this new preset that you just selected. And then we can press escape and then we can just click on clear and we've stopped the whole thing. I wish that would be escape as well. Okay, so now to the similar sample swapping feature. I've loaded up a sampler here with a sample and let's say we want to swap that out with another sample that's kind of similar. So what we first have to do is you have to make sure that the sampler is selected. So control or command, right arrow key. If we want to go back to the previous sample, we can use Ctrl or Command and the left arrow key. And if we want to go back to the original sample, also called the reference sample, we can do this with Ctrl or Command and the down arrow key. There's also the option to use a, a new sample as a new reference. So for example, if I go back to let's say this sample and I want to make this the new reference then what we can do is use control or command and the up key and then we can cycle through new samples. Okay, so now to drum kits. So you can either swap out the whole drum kit itself or you can swap out individual drum pads or the sounds on drum pads. I'm going to show you with the drum pads. It does not seem to work if there is a sampler, for example, on a drum pad or something else loaded on it, only if there's a simpler. So we're going to select the kick here and then use the same shortcuts as with simpler. So control or command and the right arrow key. The left to kind of go back. 
And if we want to go to the reference samples or the original, it's a down key as well. And say we want to create a new reference, then it's control or command and the upper arrow key as well. And you can use the alt key here to toggle this on and off. Okay, and then there's a new key command for the browser to do with the filter tags. So for example, let's say we've got here different characters of sounds. And generally, if you select one, you see the other one gets deselected. And if you want to be able to select several at the same time, then you can hold control on Windows or command on Mac. Okay, so now to some other new features that have key commands that you can use with them. The first one is about tuning. So for example, let's say I load this tuning system here, try it out, realize later on I don't actually want to use this one and I want to just go back to the default. Then um, what you can do is simply select this here and press delete or backspace. And you see, you can you go back to the default of C major. If you can't see it, you can like the tuning window because maybe you've closed it up. There unfortunately isn't a key command. I wish they would just add Alt and Eight because that would make sense here. You can just go through the menu, navigate, and click on tuning, and it's back. Okay, and the remaining shortcuts are all about the preferences. So we can go into the preferences with command or control comma that's not new but now we can use the up and down arrow keys to navigate the different pages and then you can use the tab key to kind of go through the different options if it's a toggle you can use enter to change the state or if you selected something that is a drop down you can use the arrow keys again and if you want to go back to the page chooser, then you can press shift tab to go back. And now we can go to different preference pages. Okay. And then one last thing is you can turn on use tab key to navigate. So that means that you can't use it to switch between the session and arrangement view anymore. But for example, if I'm here, I can use it to basically go through the different controls within a track. And then going back here to the settings, you see you can wrap tap navigation. So it basically would start at the top again once it's gone through the bottom. This is an accessibility feature. Most people will probably not want to use this though, but I just thought I'd mention it as well. So that's all the new shortcuts enabled in Live 12, apart from all the ones to do with clips. And since there's a lot of them, I thought I'd put them all into a separate video, which will come out next week. I've also created a PDF with all the shortcuts that I've covered today, so you can download it for free and either look at it or print it out. So it's easier to learn all the shortcuts. And at the moment, the Live 12 manual is not properly updated yet with everything. So I thought this would be kind of nice. And I've linked the article where you can download the PDF from in the description below and also up top. That's it. I hope you found this useful. If you did, don't forget to like, share and subscribe and I'll hopefully see you next time. Until then, bye.